So moving onward to our next session, that is panel discussion on digital transformation in banking, strategies for customer centricity. I would like to invite on the stage moderator, Mr. Milan Kadam, Senior Director, Sales, APAC, and MEA Kalera. Ms. Lindsay Theratil, Head of Open Innovations and FinTech Platform, Barclays. Mr. Saurabh Srivastava, CRO of Unity Small Finance Bank. Mr. Ankit Shukla, EVP, Service Delivery and Strategy, Ebix Cash Global Services. Mr. Kostub Dudani, Enterprise Account Manager, Freshworks. Mr. Hitesh Sachdev, Head of Startup Engagement, Innovation and Investments, ICICI Bank. Also, Mr. Aniket Thakur, Deputy Vice President of Embedded Finance and FinTech Partnership, Kotak Mahindra Bank. I request a huge round of applause for our panelists. First of all, uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to be here. Uh, as he said before, I represent an organization called Calera. Calera uh, is now part of Tata Communications. Tata Communications has taken us uh, over completely over the globe. We originated out of Italy and then established our business in India. Uh, out of the total revenues that we operate across the globe, there's about 30% which India contributes. It's a rapidly growing market when it comes to uh, the digital transformation. And uh, I personally witnessed over the last eight years how things have changed and moved when it comes to the CX strategies and the digital transformation as well as adoption. Every organization does. Especially we've seen this change happening uh, in the sector which is banking, the BFSI to be very specific because high level of customer interactions, customer level scores, NPS have been managed very proactively. The larger teams have been set into these organizations for us to give you the complete outlook, okay, how things have been managed on the customer communication platform. On the dig digitization, uh, today we've got multiple channels available. So just to uh, make it simple and easy, I know that there are questions for our panel members and they're going to answer and make things easy for us to share their experience with us. But I wanted to tell you that we've seen a maximum amount of digital adoption happening on channels. So gone are those days when we were only dependent on one particular SMS which reaches to our inbox. It is a customer preferential medium that organizations have started using, specifically moving to something like a WhatsApp, making it from a one-way communication to two-way two communication. Uh, the customers can proactively reach out uh, virtually to any of the organization for the kind of queries that they have. And on that note, we will initiate this discussion. I'll just uh, take a chair for me and, okay, and we will start the discussion. Just, just, just me. My first question actually uh, goes to Saurabh Ji. Okay. Uh, what are key digital transformation strategies ca banks can adopt to enhance customer centricity and provide a seamless personalized experience across various digital channels. I just spoke about the digital channels and the kind of adoption it's happening, right? I mean, we're looking at customers and looking at them, what they exactly want. What do you think about it, Saurabh Ji? Hi, thank you. Uh, so, uh, what are the strategies that the bank can adopt? Now, the banks have a very, very difficult job, and I have a lot of my colleagues who are here from banks, where uh, we are now, at this point of time, trying to transform. Most of the banks, uh, there are a, a lot of banks which are saying they have transformed and there are a lot which are trying to transform at this point of time. But uh, what is it, what, how exactly will the digital transformation help a bank? Very, very simply, it is about customer expectation and customer experience. So you have to digitally innovate to be able to meet the current customer expectations which are there in the market at this point of time. The second piece happens to be the fact that there are various ways in which you can actually analyze the data which is available with you to identify opportunities for uh, newer products as well as for disruptions in the market. And the last one which is actually very, very uh, near to my heart happens to be risk mitigation. Tons of data available within banks at this point of time. If that is analyzed correctly, there are a lot of behavioral patterns which can actually be identified for risk mitigation and for fraud detection. Now, just to touch simply on the fact that, on the three things that I just mentioned, 
very, very simply, the customer expectations from a bank have changed completely, right? There is a lot more uh, digital uh, touch base that a customer wants with the bank. They do not want to come to the branches unless and until it is very, very necessary. They do not want uh, there being a physical presence between their interaction with the bank. They want to do this themselves so that they are able to avoid a lot of, uh, uh, you know, intermediaries and a lot of possibilities of there being any kind of leakage in their uh, transaction. So the bank has to innovate. It just has to be able to deliver all its services uh, to the customer on a platform where there is a lot more DIY, do-it-yourself, which is going on uh, at this point of time. Second. There is a lot more expectation from the customer in terms of shortening the turnaround times. That's something which is which needs to be taken care of uh, uh, ASAP by each and every bank. Uh, identify newer and newer customer opportunities so you do not just turn around and say that I have these set of products and I want to sell them. Uh, whoever wants to buy, please come and take it from me. You have to now be able to identify individually what is it that a customer actually needs lots of softwares lots of uh, innovation which is available customer relationship management is now becoming one of the biggest terms in the uh, banking segment in terms of the softwares that are actually being used it is all about being able to identify what does a need different from b and to be able to target a with a particular product and b with a different product uh, risk mitigation, that's something that I don't really need to elaborate too much. We've been talking about too much of data being available with the banks, banks being able to identify customer behaviors and being able to correlate those customer behaviors with either a fraud behavior or with ways and means of coming up with early alerts to be able to kind of provide a uh, secure environment within the bank for people to be able to interact with the bank. Saurabh, that's well, I mean, summarized pretty well. And uh, while, while we spoke about the data, I think that brings us uh, the new age word CDP, right? I mean, each of the bank is managing, or financial institution for that matter, managing so much of data, they actually need a system uh, which can segregate and create preferences for people. Uh, to understand what are the needs of an individual, okay? It could be a man, it could be a lady, it could be an age group, or for that matter, what kind of requirements that they have. And that actually brings me to the next question to Hitesh, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, how, how can these financial institutions, okay, uh, leverage on emerging technologies, the new age, uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence, okay, to make it more personalized banking experience? What, what's, what's your experience, if you can share? Yeah, so I think uh, the days are of, you know, hyper-personalization, right? I mean, if I'm able to know what my customers want and if I'm able to offer that at the point in time they need it, right? That's where you hit the, you know, a jackpot, right? So, and everyone uh, is trying to see that how do we customize our offers, how do we customize our product, which are more and more relevant to a customer. And the way to do it is, you know, creating a lot of personas of customers and then kind of studying those personas and, you know, uh, offering those products, basis those personas of the customer. Uh, you know, talking about the, uh, you know, new age, you know, technologies like, you know, today, you know, we are in the age of, you know, in AI also it is traditional AI and Gen AI, right? So, uh, when we talk about Gen AI, uh, you know, there are multiple LLMs which are now large language models which are fine-tuned only for financial services, right? Uh, so we have, you know, generic, you know, LLMs like, you know, GPT-4, I'm sure everybody would be using chat GPT, you know, uh, 3.54. Uh, we have BARD, we have PALM, you know, we have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, LAMA, uh, we have Bloom, you know, talking about Bloom, it's more attuned towards, you know, the financial services, right? So uh, the key here is that, you know, uh, you know, there are three steps, right? I mean, one is, how best you are able to do prompt engineering and then basis that prompt engineering are you able to fine tune your LLMs. And then, you know, X enables basis the, you know, customer requirement, right? And this can be used in multiple ways, right? It can be uh, used for your credit appraisal, you know, for note writing, you know, your LLMs can do the job, right? You don't need a credit manager to do that. 
you can use it uh, for uh, you know your customer communication where it understands the intent what a customer wants and accordingly you know it is able to uh, you know suggest them the right recommendations or offers for wealth management you know one can use it uh, for giving right recommendations for investment strategies right so there are multiple use cases where gen ai becomes handy and it's it's evolution right it's evolving uh, today uh, on one side we have uh, you know uh, llms which are being supported by large enterprises and on the other side you know we have llms which are open source llms right i mean so it it depends on the organization in terms of which way one should adopt right uh, to my sense it is both one should try and see enterprise llms as well as you know the open source llms also and create own expertise right so we had an opportunity to meet mr altman you know few days back while he was in india and uh, you know the one of the points which came out was that can india build their own llms right i mean and it's it's a difficult task it's a journey of you know 5 7 years to build you know and uh, obviously now that is fast track but it re- requires huge amount of capital and today you know rather than building on llms i think i would say that how we build layers on top of it and utilize for our use cases would be the key and i think every bank or every institution should will have a uh, you know always one tries to maximize you know uh, the number of products which they sell to the customer so when a customer is acquired how do you offer them more and more products right and the key is that you contextualize and make it relevant to a customer you don't go and throw all the products to a customer and end up irritating and frustrating the customer rather than you contextualize and you hyper personalize it and that's where you know the ai comes into play where what is the next best offer where your consumer would like to avail and in tailor made your you know models according to that yeah no no thank you thank you so much hitesh uh, uh, while we look at this adoption it definitely brings us to the question and we've seen in recent past the neighboring countries theft uh, thefters okay especially those hackers making attacks on us uh on the digital banking environment right i mean that that brings me to my next question uh to lindsay with this new age adoption okay how do you actually look at managing the cyber security and ensuring that we mitigate these threats and keep them away from the overall new system that we're trying to adopt all right um this was not a question i was expecting but i'll i'll try to answer that um so from a cyber security perspective of course i think um, i i i really liked what uh, dr bal singh talked about that there's no technology to predict a uh, human's stupidity and greed and it's very true it's very true right and 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 the other thing that he said is human is the weakest link and actually it is right and there've been lot of studies uh, and lot of investigations that have gone behind looking at you know when a threat happens or when a fraud happens what is it that triggers that and where is the source of that and it is usually found that it is because some system is not in place some uh, link has been left uh, you know unobserved unmanaged and lot of this really happens because there is no cohesive plan put in place to look at cyber security and how that has to be dealt with right there are there are lot of emerging threats that are coming in the space i think you you spoke about how externally from other geographies but by just other geographies internally itself you know people who are like you get how many calls do you get in a day right although true caller keeps saying spam a lot and all that but they are also very innovative they keep reaching out to you from various different platforms various different uh, mediums to keep uh, you know trying to bug you and trying to you finally given to those conversations and i have seen very educated relatives of mine friends of mine taking these calls and taking these calls very seriously right why would you right that's that's the human stupidity element that uh, that was spoken about so it has got nothing to do with uh, your level of education it is just basic nature to sometimes ex- you know be more trusting of people who call you and tell you uh, you know like i got a call just few days back saying there was a 2012 policy that you had taken it's just expired please uh, you know so i said okay fine i don't care no no ma'am you have to care how can you not care <laughs> so it's just uh, you know the kind of pressure that they put on you and and if you're not aware about it you're not necessarily gullible but you st- tend to fall to this so i think the most important thing that any bank can do is uh, literacy the customer literacy 
employee education these are two very important things that have to be taken care of there needs to be more and more education of customers like we keep getting mails that uh, don't uh, you know don't uh, banks and mails that okay if, if you know there's uh, you know we never ask for otps we never ask for passwords but but the way these guys ask you these questions the 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 perpetrators of risk and frauds they ask you those questions are very different right so there needs to be a lot more education to the customers also on what type of calls because sometimes what also happens is that when banks genuinely reach out to them for something they don't entertain them so there is there is both right so it's about educating the customers and most importantly educating the employees as well right um, because I mean, there have been instances where employees also reach out actually asking for few few questions like that or they inadvertently exchange information right so it's it's very important that both these human elements are taken care of there is enough literacy enough education and awareness that is created at that level uh let's see very well said okay while we all will take care of systems and upgraded infrastructure with what not available to ensure our cyber security but a very important element of it is an education uh, which is required to go to an individual in form of communication i mean we can't really do a classroom sessions for 1 million customers who are holding your bank accounts so how you can reach out to them with the easiest possible medium and a simplistic message to tell them that what to be done and what not to be done is really important thank you so much for that uh while we talking about this communication piece okay that actually brings us to the next level that communication happening in multiple channels so it's an omni channel and my question to kaustub at this point of time okay what innovative approaches that you bring in uh, when it comes to managing this omni channel communication between mobile email uh, there's something happening on the website and seamlessly managing these things at the back end thank you milin uh the first thing why this is important is uh, even if you see the first session right which sort of from mahindra finance uh, shared right it's important to retain your existing customers uh, rather than and, and i know acquiring new customers is still important but retaining the customers and that's why uh interacting with the customers through the channel of their choice becomes very important and i've seen industry leaders also juggling between different channels trying to see which channel is uh, more preferred by the employees or which channel can we switch from a high cost channel to a low cost channel those approaches have also been uh, discussed about other thing uh, which i've seen is ki uh, like fintechs have already are uh, way ahead of the nbfc and that's why they are called fintechs not the financial companies but uh, if you see an example of phone pay so phone pay i've been able to deflect 80% of the queries coming from the customers through their omni channel bot so that's when there are simple queries basic queries which don't need human interventions those can be deflected automatically to chatbot and that's why they have succeeded so that their uh, team can support customers who has more pressing issues and more complex issues and spend more time on that uh, that's being said it is very important when we are doing that we need to have a integration with the existing system which is a system of records which you are maintaining and uh, it's it's and then again when you go inside that that's a different topic altogether when you are talking about integration uh, not only that but uh, other thing which other industry leaders are following up is that uh the native analytics which are there right because uh, now the data is so much data you have you need to have analytics i know everyone will have bring in the analytics but with those analytics the question remains are you able to derive meaningful insights from those analytics which can help you take uh, confident business decisions so based on that these are the modern approaches which i have uh, seen from the customers not to uh, not to ignore the first thing which is i mean the hygiene part where you see that if you are having multi channel uh, multi channel uh, conversation with the customers uh, whether your ui is consistent and whether your ui is intuitive or not because i as a customer will prefer to have a business with a company which is which is very easy to use and that's where uh, those parameters also uh, uh, is are a lot of importance to uh, the banking industry i mean it actually brings in a potential risk and and the kind of challenges internally uh, to manage for one of the bank or institutions who are doing this digital transformation so ankit uh, i mean uh, in context to digital transformation 
how can a bank address a potential challenge related to the customer privacy and uh, the complications and how do you actually protect it at the back end? Uh, see, uh, at a big scale, we have uh, been working with almost 40 plus different banks who are operating in the domestic market of India. So, uh, when you have you know large number of uh, bank customers in your uh, ecosystem, so you analyze bank to bank, you have apple to apple comparison, what is happening. Every bank, let me tell you, every bank in last, uh, you know, decade, if you talk about life five, last five years, everybody has invested a lot in InfoSec policy so that they can make it uh, unbreakable. Though uh, it, it always remains myth because uh, it doesn't matter how robust or, you know, uh, uh, concrete your defense system it, in terms of InfoSec te technology, but that cannot beat an intent. If somebody has an intent to beat your, uh, you know, InfoSec defense system, he will find a way. He will definitely find a way. And you see a lot of things are happening in, in the market right now. A recent example, one of the largest uh, political party in India, they tried to, uh, you know, gain some uh, public fund uh, from people. And then uh, suddenly after uh, 30 days of this uh, program, they realized uh, people are sending money, but that is not lending into a bank account of uh, political party. Then they started an uh, internal investigation. They found that the QR code, which was linked to the bank, that was like, you know, somebody has done something uh, fishy with that uh, uh, code and then that was sent across. So, paisa to hai, but mere paas nahi hai. That way. So, in the similar, uh, sim uh, you know, similar uh, lines, when it comes to uh, uh, infosec security policy, I think integrity is something which plays very major role here. Employee integrity. So what we do in nowadays, if you are onboarding a candidate in your company or maybe in your banking sector, a candidate will come and then you will have one day of introduction round that hardly takes 15 to 20, 30 minutes, depend how robust or you know vast your technology uh, terms are, do's and don'ts, and that's all. Then you will follow the normal training process and you will onboard the person. Then he will be assigned to the respective department to perform activities. But then we forget. In, in our organization, what we do, we keep telling people about how dangerous it could be. If you, you know, breach the infosec policy, if you uh, breach those things, I think that can not only become a dangerous for a person, for entire industry and organization. Right? So I think these are the things that we should do uh, apart from uh, any bank. I think any bank which is operating in India, uh, the kind of, you know, uh, people we have, I think nobody wants to uh, risk infosec policy, but at the same time, I think you know people centricity and integrity has to play a very major role. And uh, when you have you know big large uh, uh, customers in your bank, we as an organisation always try to avoid uh, demographic detail to be uh, present in terms of human eyes. So we keep keep everything uh, you know uh, you can say. Uh, Hidden, maybe, uh, information which is very necessary to perform that activity. We don't process all demogra demographical detail to a, uh, a particular team or, you know, uh, you can say campaign members who is managing that campaign. So everything is hidden. And, uh, yeah, if you don't have any demographical, demographical detail, of, detail of customer like mobile number, address or his transition details, it is very, very uh, hard to, you know, uh, uh, trap those, those uh, customers into uh, financial things. So that is how we are doing it at organization level. Uh, yeah, that's all. Absolutely. Looking forward to uh, the customer experience, okay, after all of this is to mitigate uh, the complexities for the customer. When they look at a digital interface which is available uh, on the application, it could be bank, it could be any financial organization, and the user design matters a lot. And that brings us to the next question to Aniket. Uh, what, what role user experience design play in creating customer-centric digital interface? And how can banks continuously improve uh, those interfaces and meet evolving okay, uh, the customer needs which are there? Okay, where we'll have to mitigate those complexities. I mean, how do you actually manage that? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. Pleasure to be a part of a lot of esteemed uh, gentlemen and ladies. So, uh, one of the points brought up by Hitesh sir towards the start was uh, a key word that he used was hyper-personalization. So, 
Uh, personalization is everything today. Uh, uh, we are in a world where uh, if you're looking for a product, if you're looking to open an account, if you're looking for uh, getting an FD or RD for yourself, you do not want to see a lot of other things around it. Uh, time, is, time is of the utmost essence for you. Uh, there have been, we've seen a lot of apps, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, interfaces where a lot of cross-sell happens while you're opening an account, someone talks about a loan, there is a pop-up here, there's a pop-up there. Uh, I think gone are those days. I mean, in today's uh, fast-paced uh, digital landscape uh, where uh, user experiences is like everything, user experiences shape the success of a product, an application, or even a service, uh, UX design these days has, in fact, even UI, UI UX design these days has emerged, uh, you know, as a prime uh, uh, element uh, for any business uh, who's striving, uh, you know, to get that cutting edge or striving to uh, find some differentiate, differentiating element as, uh, you know, from the competition. Uh, I think... Uh, Few moments back, when we had that session with uh, Ivani Keshav Rao sir of Yes Bank, uh, he talked about uh, Paytm, uh, you know, getting that cutting edge with the super app, Phone Pay, Google Pay. Why are these platforms very popular today? I mean, uh, uh, because they've they've managed to strike. There's nothing like a first moving advantage here. They've managed to strike familiarity, accessibility. Uh, they've become they've become a part of our lives. So. It's all to do with, like, that's the unique selling proposition today. Uh, if I have to deviate for a few seconds, uh, if you go to the food and beverages industry, uh, what is the unique proposition? It's all to do with presentation, culinary art, what they say, good packaging, all the fancy stuff around hygiene, etc. right? Uh, going to the uh, routine businessmen's uh, uh, life today. Uh, anyone prefers Tally over a lot of other things that have come in today. There's a Zoho books, there's a QuickBooks. So many new age platforms are coming in. But what has Tally uh, managed to do? Of course, it had a first mover advantage. It's a legacy. Uh, it's a legacy in itself. But then they've managed to stick to the simplicity, uh, minimalistic things. You know, uh, they've tapped on everything that needs to be there for your end-to-end -end accounting uh, flow to happen. So. Uh, it's it's all to do with UX design today, what I feel uh, in the BFSI, FinTech, and even the startup uh, uh, phase, like being a part of uh, the FinTech partnerships team in the bank, uh, we get a chance to evaluate and see uh, the demonstrations, talk to so many new age platforms, apps, uh, so many young uh, founders and entrepreneurs in Bangalore who want, who are, a, you know, who have a great ambition, who want to strike the chord, get into the market, we realized the only cutting edge was the UX. I mean, they, they, they've managed to catch your attention, they've managed to catch your eyeballs uh, with something which is, yes, you call it fancy, but at the same time, straightforward, very intuitive, very engaging, uh, very intriguing. I mean, uh, everything is right there in front of you. It doesn't take time for any generation, even, it's, uh, even if it's a generation of our dads, uh, uh, you know, or for that matter, even uh, the grandparents to, uh, you know, they won't struggle, they won't find it difficult. It is a matter of a few moments. So, and today's market, you know, is so very cluttered. Today's market is so very crowded. We are in a very uh, competitive world. Uh, and the only way to stand out is the features are open. Uh, the functionalities, the features, the offerings, nothing is unique anymore. Yes, there might be some offers, there might be some tweaks here and there. But at the end of the day, uh, when, it, when we talk about banking, every bank has to offer uh, a savings account opening journey, which is a less than two minute journey. Now these days, current account opening journey is coming, which is completely digitized. Everything is like pretty common. Everything is 1920. But at the end of the day, what stands out is the experience. I mean, the U UX design uh, encompasses various aspects uh, of an experience or an interaction that a user is going to have with your product. How much of an approachability, how much of an accessibility, how much uh, you are provoking the customer to come and explore you more. How much, it's, it's, a, it's an art in itself these days. I mean, a lot of people may not agree, but uh, that's what it is, that's the reality. Uh, functionalities are important, end processes are important, closures are important. 
resolutions, customer resolutions, downtimes, everything is important. But the starting point is the landing page. Starting point is what you see, what you feel. I mean, uh, if you, t I, I think for all the fintechs today, like we've been talking to a lot of fintech founders in Bangalore, uh, they want to invest more in UX. They want to invest, I mean, the need for having UX designers, if you go to the web, they are paid handsomely. I mean, at the heart of every UX design, you know, lies uh, a beautifully crafted, uh, you know, vision of how this journey, like you may have an ideology of the best user journey that you want to launch, but you need a person to program it, you need a person to give a face to it. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about eliminating user frustration, removing complexities, providing maximum user satisfaction. The more you satisfy the customer, the more loyalty you gain. I mean, why do we uh, prefer a certain app for our bill payments? Of course, we do not have the time to explore a lot of other apps, but we are used to an app. I mean, because that app or that page where you go and pay that simple bill payment, be it broadband, telephone, anything, uh, has now become a part of your routine, like I said. So at the end of the day, user experience is the essence. I mean, uh, and yes, banks need to learn. Uh, a lot of banks have started revamping their apps, uh, making them more simplistic. With time, uh, they are trying to uh, match up the fintech scale because that was the space where fintechs had the cutting edge. I mean, they've learned, banks have learned from the fintechs a lot. I'm sure there are very few people or barely no one in this room who uses a bank app today to make a UPI payment. Who does it? Every bank has a UPI page. I mean, I do it because the first UPI transaction I did was through my banking app and I found it okay. Like, I don't, I, I mean, it's okay. I'm not against Google Pay. I'm not against Paytm, but you, you, you are used to Google Pay. You are used to Paytm today. You are used to Phone Pay today. So that's where banks need to learn. That's where banks need to start revamping, enhancing, uh, bringing more uh, inclusivity, trying to cover everything, but not trying to make it very cluttered. Uh, you know, and that's the art we need to learn from today's uh, new age. I mean, totally, thank you so uh, much. totally agree. I mean, uh, a very simple example for me to switch apps while making a payment is the QR code sign available on the left mid part of the app and the one who's actually providing it on the right side top part of the app and my finger is not reaching there and that becomes my preference it's part of the ux design right it's pretty simple i mean you can ask these questions to yourself why am i using it and you find those answers there uh, let's move to saurabhji in the era of digital banking saurabhji what role uh, very important one and interesting one for you uh, the data analytics play in creating actionable insights for us okay Okay, uh, I mean, uh, just came out of a meeting last night, uh, which lasted about three hours, where we were generally talking about what exactly will data analytics do for us. Uh, uh, see, uh, let's start off with how exactly do you go about uh, onboarding your customers, or how exactly, forget about onboarding, how exactly do you decide what is the customer that you want to target? You start from there. There is a lot of data which is available in the market at this point of time, which helps you decide that this is what your customer segment actually is, and this is the kind of customers that you want to target in the market. You want to go and pick up, just, or you want to do a carpet bombing, that doesn't really work anymore. Uh, all my panelists here have talked about hyper-personalization and how exactly user experiences are important. So you have to be very, very, very certain on what is the, uh, kind of target market that you're looking at and then you have to go and target that particular product to that particular segment only. So that's where data analytics begins from. Once you've decided what exactly your target market is, that's where you then begin a process of elimination. That's where the onboarding process actually begins for banks. And with the moment, uh, the reason I call it a process of elimination is because you're trying to take a couple of decisions basis, uh, certain uh, information that you are getting from the customer, which is helping you decide, is this a good customer to onboard or is this a bad customer to onboard? While you're moving into the liability space, which is uh, trying to get a savings account or a current account or a FD, um, uh, you know, that's, uh, RBI will actually kill me for saying this, but that's a simpler process for a bank. Uh, 
for the bank to be able to decide well, who exactly is the right customer to lend to, those are much more uh, involved decisions which are being taken at this point of time. Now, that's where the process of elimination comes in when you start talking about uh, data analytics. It helps you decide who exactly is the customer that you want to onboard and who exactly is the customer that you want to reject. Uh, once the customer has been onboarded, then begins the process of being able to retain that customer. Retaining a customer is increasing customer engagement. If a customer today is just simply banking with you because of the fact that the customer has opened a savings account with you, that customer is not going to uh, stay with you until and unless you're able to capture more and more and more needs of that uh, customer. Tomorrow, that customer may find it very, very easy to operate another savings account and they may, he just might move away. So once you've decided who to target, once you've decided who to onboard, then comes the journey of trying to get enough uh, uh, data analytics and enough of uh, 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 you know insights into what exactly does the customer want more to try and retain that customer. Then and last is all banks at this point of time happen to be uh, uh, the only reason that a customer would like to interact with a bank is because of the security that a customer that a bank signifies. A lot of data is available for us to be able to identify customer behavior which will help us uh, you know get into early warning signals as far as the kind of risk behavior a customer is actually portraying that helps us avoid frauds which is something which is very very important for a bank as far as its reputational risk is concerned and it also helps us reduce credit costs so I would think data analytics now happens to be the backbone as much as IT is the backbone of any bank uh, which is worth its salt uh, in the country. Data analytics happens to be the second backbone that it needs to develop. Thank you. I mean, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, a uh, simple thing. You are holding a home loan from a bank and the same bank again calling you okay, to ask you that would you actually transfer a home loan to their bank. I mean, that plays a very vital role at the back end to have this intelligence uh, with the help of data, data analytics to understand that. So, Kaustup, uh, uh, question to you. The legacy systems, okay, that bank has and the new age transformation digital system that bank has, how do you actually marry these? I mean, do you see there are challenges in doing that and how do you actually manage these two things together? Yeah, there is definitely challenges. There are and uh, the even if you try to integrate a legacy application legacy application that's okay but the fun begins when you bring a modern application and that too from a third party and then you are trying to integrate with your in-house application then it becomes a different project altogether whatever uh, and and not only project the chain management becomes another thing because you need to onboard people as well right for that so, uh, uh, I'll, rather than going to much particulars, I'll give you an example where my team was working with one of the best insurance providers in India, where they had modern applications, they had legacy applications as well, and they had, I would say, uh, semi-modern kind of applications. So there, for each and every uh, type of uh, segment of an application, so we had to conduct a, a feasibility study. So how ready are they for integrations? Do we need to build an API on top of that or will it work without APIs? Do we need to bring in middleware? Do we need to integrate with iframes? So all these three approaches they considered and based on that, uh, eventually we figured out okay, all different different applications we had to utilize all three methods. The modern applications uh, they connected straight away through APIs which was straightforward. The legacy applications, the semi-legacy applications uh, were able to connect through iframes. Uh, whenever because again the thing is we need to consider use case as well what kind of integrations we are looking at so if it's like a on demand kind of an integration where if we click on a button and then only I need the data then you can go on off for the uh, iframes there and eventually when you need the data to be stored or uh, bring back from a legacy application into uh, maybe a middleware uh, for the security reasons uh, then it becomes uh, then you need a middleware for uh, doing an integration. Uh, along with that, what uh, important things needs to be considered was uh, what will happen to data storage? Where will you store the stored data? What are the security protocols or security measures are you going to take on that top of that? 
because legacy applications definitely will be because it's legacy it's outdated it's not been upgraded as per to modern security threats and standard and most of the time it's protected from the external world so uh, that's being said uh, security uh, was the final uh, uh, thing which you need to do and and eventually uh, what other things also if you want to see the rbi guidelines and the directions which they are specified that also needs to be considered because eventually the chief operating officer or a cio will need to take the ownership of that integration okay so uh, that being said you need to be flexible in terms of uh, integrations you need to try out multiple approaches and it needs to be done in a phase wise manner you are need to start small uh, and then by having an mvp ready and you can have uh, delivered into different different drops i think uh, the next question uh, is uh, is very interesting and with the kind of experience hitesh ji has i think he can probably throw us some light and give us more knowledge on that leveraging fintech partnerships for the banks and doing collaborations with them okay to enhance the digital offerings to be very very competitive hitesh ji can you can you give us a little more knowledge on that topic so i think it's all about mindset right i mean uh, the capital may not be constrained you know for institutions large institutions the you know uh, you will have excellent teams right but it's all about culture and mindset uh, it like many times you know in large organizations people are attuned to work with large enterprises right and when it comes to working with startups or fintechs you know there are kind of mental blocks and some of the blocks are that when we started this journey some of the people in the team said ki hey you know startup will kind of die you know in let's let's say in next 6 months you know what will happen to us it will get acquired by someone right uh, it may not have enough capital to sustain they don't have enough you know uh, 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 protection or you know uh, kind of they don't adhere to our you know infosec guidelines right uh, there can be data privacy issues a lot of this you know kind of mental blocks people have when they want to work with startups and like we started with journey like you know in 3 idiots movie amir khan says no all is well all is well and we started that journey right i mean so uh, when people started realizing the benefits of working with fintechs and startups that's where they started believing in you know working with them and uh, so i think you need few champions within the organization you know uh, who would take up this task and be the you know uh, brand ambassadors for those you know fintechs and startups and 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 start this journey see uh in any organization there are two ways of growing right one way of growth is that you build lot of things on your own you know and kind of uh spend lot of time energy and resources to build everything on your own the other way is to tap you know the innovation which is happening in the startup ecosystem or fintech ecosystem work with them create products in partnership with them and solve some of your internal problems right and both approaches are you know kind of uh, uh, we we kind of dwell upon both the approaches and it's paying good for us so when you uh, think about you know uh, partnership you know it's it's an another channel for you to kind of experiment for you to kind of you know challenge the existing models and also you know chart out a new way to grow right i mean so uh, i don't think any organization can only grow with in organic manner right it needs partners to piggyback and in to piggyback on their technology to piggyback on their customer base right partnerships can be multifold partnerships can be to tap into the customer base of your partners and offer your products right partnerships can be to bring their technology in house and you know solve your you know risk mitigation problems or solve some of your process efficiency problems and bring cost reduction for you it can be also to bring some solutions to enhance digital experience on your properties digital properties which you are getting right so i think partnership is a way of a life and uh, people have to kind of you know sooner or later realize it that not everything can be built in house not everything can be done you know internally so partnership partnership is a way of life and to you know kind of work upon it i think you know uh, we need to understand both sides of it right uh, there would be challenges uh you need to kind of figure out what are the best things right when we work with startups or fintechs they bring agility they bring you know uh, the kind of innovation on the table it's fantastic 
Ali, and as organization, it's our responsibility to help them to build, you know, uh, data protection. You know, it's our responsibility to guide them and mentor them. So I think it is an approach where both the parties, you know, bring on table their own, you know, strengths, right? And if you combine them, it becomes very unique. So uh, the approach, I think, the biggest thing one has to do in the organization is the culture and the mindset. I think if you are able to change, you know, that culture and the mindset in the organization, I think rest of the things are manageable, right? So, and I am I'm a strong believer of, you know, the way startup ecosystem and the fintech ecosystem and country is growing and it will grow further, right? I think we are the third largest uh, ecosystem in the world and will be soon, you know, become second or, or probably the largest in the world, you know, the kind of entrepreneurial talent we have in the country. I think uh, my uh, personally and as an organization, we are very bullish and optimistic about, you know, working with the, you know, the new age entrepreneurs and the new age startups and fintechs, right? Thank you so much, Hiteshi. I think uh, that's that's a clear message and uh, what we get to see is more of partnerships, okay, and leveraging each other's strengths to work it together in the market, okay, to win over customers to create an exceptional experience for him. Uh, Lin, uh, Lindsay and Naniket, I mean, this is a question to both of you. Uh, what role does a continuous innovation, okay, that plays when it comes to a digital transformation journey of an organization? And how do we foster and culture these innovations to stay ahead in the market when it comes to customer communication? So I think I'll just build on what Hitesh said, uh, that culture of innovation is very important. And, uh, you know, we when we talk about new technologies, every other month there's something new that's in the market, right? It's not that you can really jump and start start experimenting with everything and start working with everything. So the way I would look at it is that while your BAU continues within your organization, you use the fintech ecosystem as your extended team, right? You work with them very closely. We follow an open innovation model where we keep engaging with the fintechs on a very regular basis to see okay, what are the emerging problem statements that are there and how fintechs with their digital first approach are able to solve it. And then we partner with them to co-create a solution together. So that's proved for us a very successful model where we partner with them to co-create solutions, experiment with technology, be close to whatever is there, uh, whatever is a new technology that's coming up. And then once that are, we think, have a good value proposition for us, we try and adopt that. So it's a much better integration, much better story than, you know, Initially, when we when banks started off, they were the most innovative and they were the early adopters of every technology possible. But that used to happen like every you know five years or in a decade. But now it's just not easy to keep adopting every new technology that's there. I think uh, Costa was mentioning that when you try to get a new vendor to your ecosystem, that's when the fun begins. Yeah. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> the it, it it cannot be understated how fun it is. Um, but the challenges are real, right? And that's why integration becomes very, very important. So I think the way you work with the fintech ecosystem, work with them, use them as your extended uh, innovation team, understand what are the best use cases that you need to work with, continuously experiment, continuously explore, and, and then look at uh, the way banking now operates. You know, the earlier the bank was the place where anybody would go to for their financial transactions. But the, now the banking doesn't necessarily always emerge at a banking platform. You might go to a Google Pay to make some transaction. Or you might be going to IKEA to buy something and there you take up an installment, right? So it's now become quite of an ecosystem play. So it's no longer that bank is solely responsible for the customer experience. It has to work with all these ecosystem partners to ensure that while, yes, they are, the customers are at your platform, they have to be given a good experience. But at the same time, when they are on other some of these other ecosystem partners as well, the experience continues to be seamless. So it's very important that you have banks work in a partnership model with a lot of these players in the market, fintechs in the market, to ensure that throughout the journey, the omni-channel experience remains, the customers not ask the same set of questions or you know, the same set of uh, instructions on a very regular basis. It is a complete, uh, you know, seamless journey. That's that's the whole point, I think. Uh, it's, it's all about partnership, but partnership done right. 
just to add, uh, I mean, completely agree on the points put forth. Uh, all the banks have been of lately setting up. Uh, in fact, it's been quite some time. Every bank has an innovation lab. Uh, someone uh, named it Thought Factory. I think banks have been incubating startups, adopting their technologies. Uh, the other day I was reading uh, over 1,24,000 startups have officially registered in the government domain uh, as per what is put up in the website. Uh, I think ICICI does some excellent initiatives like uh, i3 Labs, uh, which was in uh, collaboration with Infosys. I think recently they came up with Fin Accelerator. So even for that matter, Barclays has a labs of their own. Uh, so every bank, even we have an innovation lab uh, in Bangalore. So what we try and do is uh, we engage with such startups, fintechs. We understand what they are trying to build. We do, do proof of concepts. Uh, we see their demonstrations, and then we see whether it's worth investing. The bank has a every bank has a nice uh, heavy budget uh, for such innovations because that's the way of life. Uh, partnerships, like uh, Hitesh sir said. Uh, you know, it is the way of life for any bank these days. We cannot be sticking to our own legacy system. So uh, uh, a lot of fintech players these days are uh, uh, innovating uh, in the fraud, uh, fraud detection areas, innovating in the uh, digitization of uh, all, a lot of journeys of, that a bank has today. So it's, it's always good to engage. It's always good to keep ourselves updated. And it's always good to invest in such. So, Completely agree. Thank you so much, uh, Aniket. Thank you so much, uh, panel members. Uh, that that takes I mean that takes us to the end of the session uh, for a discussion today. It was really fantastic meeting you all and moderating this session for all of you. Uh, as we said, co the communication is at the core for uh, everything that we do. Okay. Uh, I would request the members and the the panelists also to reach out to Kalera booth outside to understand how simply uh, i mean how we do the simplification when it comes to communication the new age digital modes that we use and the importance of video which hasn't started or caught up a pace in our country yet but there's something new that we bring on table in form of innovation on that note thank you so much you've been a fantastic audience thank you thanks a lot to the fellow panelists and moderator for sharing insights on digital transformation in banking it's the need of the hour now i request mr hitesh sachdev to come forward and felicitate his fellow panelists and moderator. I